Welcome to the GCN Racing News Show. Coming up this week, we look back at a dramatic final week of the Tour de France and ask the question, who exactly is Egan Bernal? The final day in Paris saw the Tour de France crown its first ever South American winner in Egan Bernal. And at 22 years of age, the Colombian's rise to the pinnacle of the sport has been nothing short of meteoric. So we thought we'd rewind and find out a little bit more about how he got to this point. Bernal was born on the 13th of January 1997 in Zipacura, Colombia, which is northeast of Bogota. And importantly for a cyclist, sits at an altitude of 2,652 meters above sea level. Cycling Tips featured a great interview with him in 2016, where he gave some insight into how he found the sport. He told Daniel Ostenek that his dad had been a keen cyclist, but not a pro. And at age eight, he would ride with his dad at the weekends. There was a race in his hometown, and with Bernal Cena not wanting him to ride, someone else gave him a helmet. The rest, they say, is history. He went on to win multiple races and was talent was visible from a young age. His journey into pro cycling, though, came via mountain biking and the talent spotter, that's Gianni Savio. Egan represented Colombia at the World Junior Mountain Bike Championships in 2014 and 15, taking silver and bronze medals in that order. He had success in a junior in his home country, but after winning the Sondando della Fiandre, the dream of the Tour of Flanders race in Italy, he was introduced by his agent to Gianni Savio, who was looking for a climber. He signed the then 19-year-old on a four-year contract. Contract. So he skipped the under 23 ranks entirely. I first saw him at the Giro del Trentino in 2016, where I was commentating. He climbed with the best and ultimately took the white jersey as the best young rider. A successful season followed, winning at the Tour of Bihor and finishing fourth at the Tour de l'Avenir. I next saw him at the Tour de Langkawi in Malaysia in 2017, where I got to interview him on multiple days. Unfortunately, there was no Genting Highlands stage that year, which we would have loved to see him in action on. And despite his best efforts, he couldn't quite shake off everyone on the less steep Cameron Highlands. Success after success followed and two stage wins and the general classification at the Tour de l'Avenir saw him transfer to Team Sky for 2018. He impressed his first ever Tour de France, working to help deliver Geraint Thomas to victory. But 2019 is all about this humble 22-year-old climbing sensation who will become the youngest winner of the Tour de France for 110 years. When you look at Bernal's stats, they're frightening, particularly for his competitors. He's won three of the four World Tour stage races he's done this year. He has finished in the top six in 12 of the last 13 stage races that he's finished. The only blemish being last year's Tour de France, where he was working for both Geraint Thomas and Chris Froome. Bernal's victory at the Tour de France was in part down to three separate crashes. The most serious, that of Chris Froome at the Criterium de Dauphiné, without which, it would have surely been him that entered the race as team leader. The crash of Geraint Thomas in the early stages of the Tour de Suisse, which may have left the Welshman a percentage or two short of top race form. And finally, the crash of Bernal himself back in May, without which he would have led Team Ineos at the Giro d'Italia and come to the Tour a little more fatigued, if at all. In the tour itself, he handled himself well in a stressful first week, including making the front group on a pivotal day in the crosswinds on stage 10. Despite losing ground in the time trial on stage 13, he made up for it with back-to-back -back days in the Pyrenees. His attack with six kilometers to go at the top of the Col de Luzeron on stage 19 was a brave move, but ultimately it was that one which won him the tour. With the cancellation of the stage shortly after, we'll never know if he would have held on all the way to the summit finishing team. But what we do know is that if Bernal had waited until that summit finish, the situation could have panned out a lot differently for the Colombian. What was great to see was how much it meant to him. This video from Eurosport shows how emotional he was when he took the yellow jersey on stage 19 under the strangest of circumstances. Sí, 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 es, es... Es simplemente increíble, eh, yo creo que fue algo que, o sea, que, que soñábamos y... And not only will it mean a huge amount to him, it will also mean a huge amount to the whole of Colombia. Already a hugely passionate cycling nation, their celebrations will be off the charts. And burnout will no doubt inspire a whole new generation of future world-beating climbers. 
For Team Ineos, that was the seventh Tour de France win in the last eight years, a remarkable feat even with their remarkable budget taken into account. For the last three years, they've achieved the win with a different rider, and it's the second time in two years that they filled the top two of the top three spots on the podium. That said, this race was one of the most enthralling additions in recent years. Had we known at the start it would be an Ineos 1-2 in Paris, I think we'd all been forgiven for rolling our eyes in despair. But in reality, the way they rode, the way they had to ride, was completely different this year. Not only did they appear to not have the same strength and depth on the climbs as in previous years, they were also forced to ride an attacking race. Why? because of a Frenchman named Julien Alaphilippe. How good was he? Two stage wins, both of which were taken in its typical flamboyant style, plus 14 days in the yellow jersey. Many were expecting him to crack, but the further he went into the high mountains, the more we and he were wondering if he'd become the first French winner in the event in 34 years. In the end, it wasn't to be. Alaphilippe did crack at the highest point of the race on stage 19. He was undoubtedly paying for the many efforts he'd made in the first week of the race, without which, perhaps, he'd have had that little bit of extra energy for the final few days. And that will lead to more speculation from us, from his team, from himself, as to whether he could become a Grand Tour winner in the future if he changes the way he rides. And to that, I would say, we don't really want you to, Julian. In order to become a Grand Tour winner, he'd have to ride conservatively, save energy whenever possible, play the long game, and that is about as far from his current mentality as you could get. Alaphilippe loves to attack, and we love to watch him attack. He was the entertainer of this year's Tour de France, both on and off the bike, just as he has been in pretty much every other race in which he's competed this year. Do we really want him to change? I'm not sure I do. We'd like to know your thoughts, of course, on this. Would you like to see Alaphilippe have a proper crack at winning the Tour de France next year by preparing differently and riding a more conservative race? Or would you like to see him stay exactly the way he is? Let us know what you think in the comments section below. The funny thing is that even if Alaphilippe changed his preparation next year and focused everything on winning the Tour de France, he may not necessarily do any better. It will be very interesting to see how he plans 2020. Another man we don't want to change is Vincenzo Nibali, who took the final truncated mountain stage on the penultimate day of the race, his 41st Grand Tour stage in the space of 78 days, according to Amati Pirali on Twitter. Brilliant to see Garant Thomas so gracious in defeat to his teammate. And actually, what a performance by the Welshman, given his far from ideal lead into this year's race. Stephen Kreisweig rounded out what has been an incredible race for Team Jumbo Visma and becomes the ninth Dutch rider to get on the Tour de France podium. The big loser in the final week was poor Thibaut Pino, who reportedly banged his legs on the bars on stage 17, got through stage 18, but succumbed to the muscle tear the following day. Watching him stop at the side of the road in tears, consoled by his teammate William Bonnet, I think left most of us in tears too. Like Alaphilippe, Pino animated the race this year and gave the French and the rest of us even more to cheer about. To see him have to climb into his team car like that was devastating. Let's hope he can take all the positives from this year's race and come back stronger than ever in 2020. According to Cycling Roadbook on Twitter, on only one other year, 1956, has the Tour de France podium not won a stage between them. Although that makes the assumption that Jumbo Visma's team time trial win was not a stage win for Stephen Kreisweig, and even the fourth place finisher, Emmanuel Bachmann, didn't win a stage either. He did, though, announce himself as a future Grand Tour winner. As Dan pointed out last week, we haven't really spoken about him enough. In fact, I don't think we even mentioned him in our preview, which was remiss of us. But we won't be making that mistake again. Just as it's great to see the French on the verge of winning their home Grand Tour again, it's also great to see Germany with a new Grand Tour contender. Much of their success since the Ulrich era has been in sprinting. Speaking of sprinting, we must also mention Peter Sagan, who sealed the deal on a record-breaking seventh green jersey. And now on to some other news away from the Tour de France. The end of the road for a sponsor is never good, and Rome Pot have announced that they're to stop their involvement in cycling at the end of the season. In a press release on the team website announcing the news, they're not sounding too confident at finding someone to replace the Holiday Park company. Let's hope for all the riders and the staff that they do. 
Over at the Adriatica Ionica race, Remco Evenepoel continues to impress winning stage three by over two minutes on his own. He will replace current champion Victor Campenarts in the Belgian squad for the upcoming European Time Trial Championships. Campenart citing fatigue from a busy early part of the season. At 19, will we see this young rider follow a similar trajectory to our Colombian Tour de France winner? There was also a 1-2-3 for De Kernic Quick Step on stage one, which means they now have a total of 51 wins to their name so far in 2019 when we recorded this. Coming up next week, the classic of San Sebastian, the start of the Tour of Poland and the Tour de Wallonie. If, like me, you totally suffer from post-tour blues, then you can, of course, binge watch all our daily highlights many times over while eating ice cream and waiting for the Vuelta to come around. Thanks for watching, keep subscribing to GCN Racing. We've got loads of live racing and highlights to come in August. And if you want something a little different, check out Hank's 1903 Tour de France stage epic with Mark Bowman by clicking the link on your screen now. Have a great week from me, Martin McDonald. It's bye for now.